All right, in this video, we'll be covering how to draw oblique sections. What that means is if you were to imagine an object having a diagonal plane cutting through it, so you get a section profile that looks like this. And this is our goal. We wanna create an oblique section drawing using our orthographic views that we've made in the previous videos. What we wanna do is imagine looking at this top view right here and imagining a diagonal line cutting through like this. And now I've pre-estimated where this angle would be it would be somewhere that gives me something like this. So we can kind of walk through it three dimensionally, uh, but you place it where you think is right. You may want to place it kind of considering where the projection lines will be in relationship to the sheet. Obviously, if we go back to our page four, we might need to move some things kind of like this because we know the drawing is going to be somewhere over here. Okay, so uh, yours might look a little bit different. You might have it somewhere a little bit higher. You might have this drawing up here and maybe you're projecting from there. I don't wanna overcomplicate this, but uh, you kinda of wanna consider where your projection line is gonna be. Anyway, uh, let's jump back into this top view and determine how we construct this oblique section. I have this diagonal line, and similar to some of the things we've done before, every time a diagonal line touches one of our walls, we're gonna assume that there's an intersection projection point. So how do we do that? We grab this point right here and we offset it and it doesn't really matter where it goes. We're just using this offset uh, parallel to create a projection line just like this. And really this is the main line that I'm considering that I think is important. So I'm gonna change this to a construction line. And for now, I'm gonna delete this. We're gonna use this top view and this side view. Remember the side view is tilted to the side. The ground is kind of, the bottom part is like right here. Uh, so what we're gonna do right now is we're going to draw some major height points. Uh, definitely these, the top and the bottom. And then we probably want to include some of the other important lines. Okay, now I know there's other ones, but I'll come back to those later. Let's just get the major points down. One of the things I want to consider is where's the extreme points of our object, right? Meaning where's the kind of boundary points? I'm going to go ahead and delete this line because it's not important right now. Uh, what's important is this is perpendicular to this diagonal, which we got, so we don't need that because this one's the same thing. We just use that one as an initial uh, generator for a perpendicular line. Okay, anyway, so we're moving on. We're going to go ahead and use this line, find an intersection point. I want my drawing to be somewhere over here, right? And like somewhere in this vicinity. And I don't want to intersect this drawing or this drawing or anything like that. So I know that this boundary point right here, and this boundary point right here is going to be a good location for my drawing. Again, this just takes maybe some uh, experience doing it to understand what I'm trying to indicate here. But I'm going to go ahead and trim this stuff right here. And this will be our kind of starting point for the drawing. We know this boundary right here and this boundary right here will kind of start the position of where the drawing goes. Drawing will probably be somewhere over here, but uh, we want it to turn, okay? We want to create an arc, so just type arc, A-R-C. And what you want to do is select this point right here, highlighted this intersection, and go to this first point right here, align it down to this diagonal, right? So I'm just going to click this one. And we're going to do the same thing with the rest of them. All right, so what we're going to do is copy this right here. We're going to copy it right to this point, and we're going to go ahead and trim it. And then we'll align it with all the rest of them. So what you need to do is grab the parallel line to this oblique section and copy it to the points of the intersection uh, on this arc, okay? And then change these to construction lines. Now, I know that I want to intersect the big box. This kind of, you know, let's call it the, the four by four inch box. I know this is the first point of intersection. And because of the hidden lines, I know the thickness of this object is uh, because it does have a thickness on top. It, it's probably intersecting like right about here. Bring that one in the first intersection. So it's intersecting right here and it's intersecting right here, okay? If we follow our four inch box, it's this box right here, okay? And we know that this drawing is actually gonna be upside down because of the way that we're rotating it. And so the top of it is right here, this line, and I didn't draw the top line of it, so I need to go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and fill out some of the missing lines so I don't just do this over and over again. Okay, so we have this top two lines over here, which are these ones right here, okay? Okay, so these two lines 
are the top of the box, which is this point right here, right? Okay, so this is the ground. It doesn't have a ground object at the bottom of it, but it does have a top thickness. Okay, that top thickness is right here. Okay, and so we're cutting through basically at this point right here. Then we're gonna go ahead and copy this over to this point, and we're also gonna copy it over to this point. Those are the two other points that intersects this four inch box, right? This dashed line represents its thickness. We'll grab these two, right? We know these, this edge and this edge are the kind of primary edges for our wall here. Okay, so we kind of projected these lines upward. That looks correct. Uh, if I got these points correct, it should be right. And I think I did. So what we're gonna do here is we know the ground is somewhere over here and we need to extend these lines actually slightly further. So we're gonna need to draw the profile line, which comes up to, what do we say, up to here, right? So it comes up to this point. And so that right there is the first section profile. Change object layer, and then we're going to hatch this. We're gonna change this hatch to our hatch layer. That ends up drawing this point right here. Now you can see I did it wrong because it doesn't actually go all the way down, right? We actually don't hit this wall right here, so it doesn't come down. We're actually just in the ceiling, so we should just kind of hit that ceiling portion, the roof portion of it. So let me go back and it's this leg down that's the problem. We're not really going down like that. So let me go ahead and change that. What we're indicating really is we have this point right here, here. That looks somewhat correct. And now what we want to determine is this kind of this cut at the bottom of the box. That's going to help us figure out this corner right here. So we have determined the height of the box, which is here, and it's got a thickness, which is right here. Obviously it's this box right here. So that's the thickness of it. And then this line right here is the height of that box. Okay. Maybe hard to follow, but uh, hopefully it'll make a little bit of sense as we draw it out. As we mentioned before, it's intersecting at this point right here and right here. Okay, and then it's also intersecting here and right here. So I know I'm gonna need to copy this line from here to here and here to here. And you can kind of start seeing the outline. It happens, it spans from here to this point to that point, and that's the thickness right there. And then we change that to section line, and then we're gonna hatch this, okay? And that will be our section hatch. Okay, so we're starting to get some lines coming through, right? starting to kind of make sense. Let's look back at this. It's starting to kind of match it. You have this first L and then you have that. Let's continue with some of the other profiles before we get some of the, the back lines, the, the lines that, you know, in the background. The next intersection point is right here. Okay. We have one side of it and we're just going to copy this perpendicular line over to this line, this line, and then we have the, the last one finally over there. Something to keep in mind is, you know, when we're looking at this, this object right here is really this object in the background. Okay and it doesn't seem to have thickness on top of it, but it does have two walls, okay? So we're gonna see the two walls appearing and it does have a thickness at the bottom. So we will be including uh, a hatch right here. So if you look at 3D, just so we can visualize it, what I'm saying is it doesn't have a top, but it does have a bottom thickness, okay? So it's gonna do something like this. Now this angle right here, we're gonna have to determine it, we have to figure it out. Um, but for now, let's go in and try to determine what we have. So just to think about it, you, you want to see this is the top of the, the box. So it's really this line right here. And so if I was to draw a simple U, which, you know, what I'm drawing is not 100% correct. And I'll show you why. But, you know, I just want to get the simple profile as we did before. We, we kind of see the U, but I'll show you that there's something weird that's not quite right yet. Okay, so this side looks kind of right. This side looks wrong. It doesn't have that angle, right? What, what this angle really is, is that we're cutting the object while it's sloping down. We're not considering the slope yet, right? So how do we determine the angle of the slope at this moment? Well, we know these have different heights because where it's being cut. The way I'm going to figure this out is by drawing a projection line down to the points where these intersections are occurring at this point right here uh, in the, the bottom side view. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line this way. And what I wanna do is I wanna connect it to the side view, right? Remember, cause these things are connected, right? They, they should relate to one another. So I'm gonna draw the top view over here. And we've done this in previous videos. I just don't have it here. What we wanna do is understand the relationship between this top line and the kind of bottom line. So if I, if I just check the distance here between them, this is what, uh, 0.345. If I offset this by 0.0345 in this direction, I'll get the first height point, 
the distance between these two will be 0.379. Now this distance is just determined based off the relationship between these lines and where they intersect at the slope point. Your lines obviously would be different than mine. So go ahead and do this and then trim it. Okay, so now this is gonna help us construct the lines uh, on this end, right? So go ahead and project this to this point, and then we'll project it to this point right here. Now, what's important uh, to do right now is just for the sake of sanity, uh, change these to construction lines. Okay, so now we're starting to construct these, and now we have our opportunity to uh, use the arc command again. Oh wait, we need that kind of point uh, right here. Remember, that's how we constructed it. So you type that arc command. This, this portion right here is what we're trying to determine, this kind of thing right here. So what we want is to determine the intersection point of the interface of the thickened wall right here. So this is the intersection point if we follow it, and it's this line right here. Okay, so this was also drawn incorrectly. So now what we could do is on this edge, you could just move it to this point. Okay, so you can just adjust your polylines or you can redraw. In my case, I'm just going to select the points and move them as, as I see fit. So I'm going to extend this other line perpendicular. And so that's where the next point is going to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and move that right there. And then I'm just going to change this to section line weight. I'm going to change these line weights right here to construction. And now obviously we need to fill this in. Hatch. Okay, so now it's starting to look correct, right? We got that, we determined that angle right there uh, and we have these pieces. And really that's all the section cut profiles we need. Everything else is just gonna be in the background, right? We know that uh, we have this kind of edge right here and then we have that edge. This should be the easiest thing to determine. Edge right here is really this kind of, this interface right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this interface of the wall here. And then we know we need that as well. So. We follow these up. We just draw a profile line here. We'll go ahead and make that a medium line weight. One thing we do want to determine is this inner edge, this inner box right here. So you'll come down to this point and we will simply just copy uh, at this inner edge right here, this inner corner, I should say. And we know we're going to have a line. So I'm going to go ahead and make this line right there and I'm going to change that to light line weight. Okay, so we have that line. Now, we will do some cleanup. I mean, I feel like this is a lot of lines. So if I scale these things back, we won't have a lot of this intersection and I'll clean it up later, but you know, you, you'll start to see some of this stuff a little bit better. And so now we want to determine kind of this edge, this box up here. So let's go ahead and do that. Simple enough. And what's our next determination? Um, well, we have some hidden lines in the back. Now, <clears throat> we should show these. So we go ahead and determine that. One thing I wanna be aware of is in the previous drawings, we were drawing hidden lines in the front. Uh, I'm gonna hold off for now on doing that. Uh, and I'm just gonna stick to just showing the hidden lines in the back, okay? Because this one has already a lot of lines going on. I don't wanna overcomplicate it. So we're gonna go ahead and determine these lines in the back real quick. Okay, so we have a moment right here and here, and then we have another moment uh, right here to right here. And we do have hidden lines going through that, but because they're under the hatch, I'm not gonna show it. Obviously this has a thickness that I didn't account for. Yep, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this a hidden line as well. There's also another point here I didn't account for. And now we need to go ahead and clean this up slightly because the construction lines are literally all over the place. But before we do that, let's go ahead and look at it in our page layout view. So we get something that looks like this. It's uh, pretty extreme in terms of the line weights. I think we can kind of adjust that. Again, if I was to change the hatch to something slightly darker, just so you could see it, um, it looks like this. And I think this is a little bit too thick, but either way, there's a lot of construction lines happening here and it's getting very, very hard to read. Additionally, we need to add a diagonal uh, section point here. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and show you what it should look like. All right, so finally, I just cleaned this up. I cleaned up some of the line weights. I cleaned up some of the intersections of these hidden lines, changed the construction lines to this uh, dashed pattern instead of the kind of larger dash. I added some text for the sections and for the drawings. V1 and V2 and V3 represent the views, and then S's represent section. And then these section symbols are just indicating which sections they belong to. That way people, when they look at your drawings, kind of understand what we're looking at. It is getting kind of complicated, so this helps alleviate some of the issues there. Okay, you might have to test some of the colors of the hatches. You might have to test some of the line weights. You might have to test some of the dashed line types. For example, if you go back into, where is it, construction lines, change this to uh, dashed. You know, this might print out better. I don't know if you go to file print. You know, this might read better, it may not. You might need to darken this up. So it prints a little bit darker. You may want to test it with a darker line weight. This seems like it's getting very, very cluttered. I wouldn't do that. What I had before seemed to be working quite well. This might work well, or something like this might work well. It just really depends on your line weights uh, and the line colors. But that's pretty much it. That wraps up this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.